For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody say! The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here. It's right here, it's not here, it's right now. It's right here, it's not here, it's right now. Welcome back to Kingdom Living Now. I am Danette Tullock and with me are Pastor Bobby Somers and Pastor Julian Mills. Uh, we've been talking about the gospel of the kingdom and as we read from Galatians 1 last time, um, this is very interesting to see how plain, or it seems <laughs> to be obvious, yeah. that there is only one gospel. Hmm. We saw the, the Apostle Paul, he said that, you know, if, if anyone comes teaching another gospel, let them be a curse. A curse yeah. was pronounced yeah, on yeah. them for not, um, you know, for, for perverting or for bringing another gospel. Yeah. Why are we missing this when this <laughs> is so, um, it seems obvious to me. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe the more important question is to identify what that one gospel is. Right. Um, and I, I think th uh, there are many reasons, many factors that we could look at, but one of the reasons why the church on a whole is missing it it's, it's, it's how we approach the book. It's how we approach the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. how we approach the whole mm -hmm. thing of God. And um, for, for, for many of us, how we view God, how we approach the things of God, it is guided by the traditions of men, the religiosity of what we see the church, where the church is concerned. So the, the standard that the church is functioning from. It's not the standard that comes from God. It's the standard that comes from man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we process the things of God from that standard rather mm -hmm. than processing the things of man from God's mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. And so we go to the scripture, and these things are there and it's clear, it's obvious, but we're not seeing it. And because I think of myself, when I got born again um, in the year 1987, and uh, it was in the month of April of that year, and I became a part of a denomination that the, the gospel of the kingdom is not, is not understood. They'll talk about gospel too, they, 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 they you know, and, and I'm looking back now and I, I smile, but because the name of the denomination, the Glad Tidings, mm -hmm. Glad Tidings Church of the Firstborn, right? Mm -hmm. All right? If, when you understand that, you, you, you realize what, what should have been happening. And it was steep in tradition, things that was handed down from, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever, and very legalistic. And I had no understanding of what I'm talking about now. I had none then mm -hmm. until God began to do something. And I, I, I believe that it was based on where God would take me. God began to interrupt the, the status quo, the whole thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and, and caused me to begin to think in a, a different, yeah. you know. And I started to ask questions. And God allowed uh, a, a Jehovah's Witness person, I, I would say that, to stop me one day and ask me a particular question. And the question they asked me, rather than causing me to think in their direction, it caused me to think in the direction that God would have me to. Mm -hmm. Because they were talking to me about Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 about seek first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But their emphasis was not on seeking the kingdom of God. The emphasis was on the point that God is going to bring his kingdom to the earth because that's their belief. Mm -hmm. They talk about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And in some aspects of the church, that's why uh, when you look at certain aspects of the church, they would kind of shy away from it too because they don't want to be labeled as being 
you know, Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses. Witnesses. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's what they're talking about. But they're talking about it coming. They're talking about it in a perverted way too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not from the standpoint of how Jesus taught and preached it and the apostles. So the, 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 the person brought up Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And they're talking to me about, you know, the days coming when Jehovah is going to cleanse the earth and he's going to, rest, you know, he's going to bring his kingdom and he's going to establish his kingdom. Da, 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 and, da. and I walk away from that spot that day thinking about Matthew 6 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. Then I go back and I look at it and I'm reading it and it caused me now to begin to go to the scripture and look at other aspects, other places where the kingdom is mentioned. And it caused me to start to ask questions. And, and um, I started to ask those some questions and who I went to and asked the questions. I was not getting the answers that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I fully understood then what was the answers that I should be getting. Mm -hmm. But I knew that the answers that was coming was not, was not was being not witnessed. Settling. Yes. It was not mm -hmm. s settling. Right. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't settling in my spirit. Mm -hmm. So I keep on, you know, digging and asking and digging and digging. And as I started to do that now, it opened up. It opened up something where, where God was concerned for me to begin to go through the scriptures, looking at where talk about kings and kingdoms and, and, and all these different things and begin to look at what kingdom means and king and stuff like that. And it just caused me to begin to even pay attention to this. Yeah. And when I saw this, this caused me now to look at everything differently because I went back to even look at the gospel that Paul preached. And for us to see the gospel that Paul preached is not in Romans, it's not in the letter to the Romans, the letter to the Corinthians, the letters to the Galatians, the letters to the Ephesians, the letters to the Colossians, the Philippians, and so on. We have to go back to the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See when, after he it's got started. converted, mm -hmm. what was it he preached? Mm -hmm. And as he went on from there, um, you know, different journeys that he went on, and even when he was in prison and under house arrest. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. What was it that he preached? Because mm -hmm. that's what I had to do mm -hmm. to accept what he was saying here and understand the seriousness of it. Mm -hmm. Just, I just wanted to interject one second. Um, being in in the minis in minis part of a ministry for maybe more than twelve years before starting hearing the gospel of the kingdom, um, they talk about the gospel and it, it's meaning good news. So mm -hmm. the, the idea was good news, and it's good news. Anything about God is good news. So anything you so pick from the Bible is considered you put on good gospel because it's good news. It's good news, mm -hmm. yes. like mm -hmm. concerning God, mm -hmm. of course. Yep. Yep. So we saw the gospel of, of different things, and, and it, it was just left at the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good news. Yeah, and yeah. then it's anything about that God. That we choose we to choose reach to put on that we, yeah. yeah, yeah, we call mm -hmm. that, yep. That's it. That, that's how most of the church view the whole thing called gospel. Yeah. And, but, but reading this scripture, reading this scripture, and when he make the statement, because um, for persons that are watching now, in the previous episode, we, we, we read from Galatians 1 and we read from verse 1 coming down to verse uh, 10. But I don't want to go back to verse 1. In verse 6, he says, I marvel. Hmm that you are turning away so soon mm -hmm. from him. And the him here is referring to God the Father who called you in the grace, in the grace of Christ or of the King. Because Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus the, is the Son of God and the Father made him King. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, I, I, I marvel, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him, God the Father, who called you in the grace of his son Christ, the King, to a different mm -hmm. gospel. Mm -hmm. So the moment this comes into the picture, a different mm -hmm. gospel, that should let me stop and think. Yes. Right? Right. That... Be, be, because for you to have something different, it means that there was an original, original, mm -hmm. right? And the original is the original. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to come up with something that looks like the original, 
it's not the original. Mm -hmm. It's, it's different. something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And he says in verse 7, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you. So, so Paul says, where the gospel of the kingdom is concerned, if we preach something else, we're troubling. We're, we're troubling what heaven put in place and those who heard the gospel of the kingdom previously, if they hear another, if another come, it's troubling what they have heard and troubling them mm -hmm. in how they ought to continue to respond to what they heard previously. But he, he qualifies it here when it says um, there's a different gospel, which is not another. Yep. So that means there's, it's not like there's another version of it. There's right. no other. It's it, only one. It's only one. It's only one. Right. Yeah. Right. He said, but even if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, any other gospel, anything else that we make up and call it the gospel, he said, let them be a curse as we have. And, and then I, I look at this and say, as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a curse. All right. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 4. And we will eventually, as we go along with this, I don't know how many episodes it will take. I don't know how the Holy Spirit will lead us on it. But um, we will come back to touch on this a little in between as we discuss the, this thing called the gospel of the kingdom. And when we talk the kingdom, the kingdom is of God or the kingdom of heaven in some cases. In Matthew chapter 4 and pick up at verse 12, this is where we go back to the origin mm -hmm. of this thing, right? And who it originated with. In, in, in Matthew chapter 4, this is where we have the, the old um, setting of John the Baptist coming on the scene. In chapter 3, the Bible tells us that after John um, had, had come into the place of uh, being released by God, because the Bible says in, in, in St. Luke that John was in the wilderness until the time of his showing forth unto Israel. So God, God prepared him, processed mm -hmm, him mm -hmm. and prepared him yeah. for his assignment. Yes. Yes. Then he came out on the scene, and, he, and when he came on the scene, he's preaching a message and the message was about the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven mm -hmm. or the kingdom of God and when he came preaching this message he preached the message in the context that is pointing to another mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to come yes I am not the one the gospel that I'm talking that I'm preaching I am not the king I am not the king and I am talking about a kingdom that is near, but not yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So he came, we see chapter 4 started out with Jesus Christ. After he was baptized in chapter 3, chapter 4, Jesus was tested for 40 days and 40 nights. And then the verse in verse 12, John the Baptist was cast into prison. Um, it starts out here in verse 12 telling us this. It says, now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Nephtali, that it might be fulfilled. So even as he moved in these regions and doing what he's doing, it is fulfilling what was prophesied, mm -hmm. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has 
dawned. The verse 17 says, from that time, from the time that John was put in prison, Jesus begun to preach, to announce, and to say, repent, change your mind, turn for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he's saying this on, a, on, a, on another level than John, mm -hmm. because John mm -hmm. was not the king, right? So John is the herald. Ah, John is heralding something to come. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And the something that is to come is directly tied to someone coming. Mm -hmm. Because it's the someone who is coming is bringing the something that is to come. That's yes. right. Yeah. Now, the one that John is talking about that is to come, when he came, he is the one that the something that is to come is tied to. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if, if the one that is the something to come is tied to, when he comes with the something that is to come, he's talking about it on a different level. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now he came and he's saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this was also important to Jesus, the king, in time. If the message of the kingdom is important to the king, why should the church that was raised up by the king and established by the king and given the authority mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and power by the king to continue the representation of this thing that he brought, why should the church walk away from it? And if the church that have been raised up to represent that thing walk away from the representation of the thing, what are we representing? Mm -hmm. And what... Where is our relevance? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you see, um, no authority. Even the, even this, um, when we speak about the gospel, uh, you know, church in general, where where the 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 theme or the underpinnings of it is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's if 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 you yeah, ask. Yeah. 90% of the church or more, that's, that's the, that's yeah. the underpinning. What is the that's what they're going to mm -hmm. say. Yeah, yeah. The gospel is, is, is death, burial, and resurrection. Um, when most of what Jesus taught, <laughs> it was not his death, be, his, his death burial, burial, and, and resurrection. resurrection. No. That was only given in, in, in confidence private, with yeah. his, with his, mm -hmm. to his yeah, disciples yeah, yeah. to let them know what's going to happen. Yeah. So therefore, there got to be something that is before that, because yeah. that wasn't the... That wasn't the assignment bef before. That was just uh, the means <laughs> to an end. Means to get to something. Yes. What is, but is, we're teaching only the means, but we're not teaching the some things that the means was meant, meant. for us to come into. Mm -hmm. But is so it because a, they're missing the whole concept that he is a king, though? Yeah, that that's a the, part the of it too. The kingdom aspect is missing. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, but you know. to even see the kingdom, they have to first recognize him as a king. Exactly. Of course. Of course. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to run ahead of ourselves, but that's what we're going to look at because we have to look at that if we're going to understand the gospel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So now Jesus, the Bible says here, preach and saying and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The scripture says, and Jesus, uh, let me skip over verse 18 and pick up at verse uh, 23. All right, from verse 18 to 23, we'll pick verse 22, we'll skip over that. So in verse 17, from the time that G John was cast into prison, Jesus heard about it, he began, he began to preach and mm -hmm. to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice, it tells us the context mm -hmm. of what he was announcing and saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is here. Mm -hmm. It has arrived. You can touch it. Mm. Right? It has arrived. It's here. Mm -hmm. That which was coming is has here. come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's here. Now, in verse 23, it says, And Jesus went about all gladly, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the Kingdom. kingdom. This is the first time this phrase or statement is mentioned in the, what if we call it the New Testament, or where the gospel of Matthew is concerned. It tells us that he went about all Gadli teaching in their synagogues. So Gadli means ten cities. Mm -hmm. 
So it was composed of 10 cities. So within these 10 cities, you're talking about how large is one of these cities, Capernaum, um, Nazareth, and so on, all right? Um, so there is more than one synagogue that would be in a city because it depends on the amount of people and okay. so on. So all of these cities, he went around in circuit and he went to each of the synagogues at whatever time he may choose to do that. When we read in other gospel, we see there are times when he's there on the Sabbath. There are other days when he's there and he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And the scripture says, um, uh, following that, he healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Now, the gospel of the kingdom. Now, well, let us define, and you made reference to that in the previous episode. When we look at the gospel of the kingdom, um, we, 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 we're asking the question, what is the gospel of the kingdom? What is the gospel itself? What does the word gospel mean? And I look at something here in Hebrew. It comes from the word basar, B-A-S-A-R, basar. So it speaks of um, to be, it, it's something that is fresh. It is it, it, it used the, 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 the term, the definition, rosy, cheerful, to announce glad news. It speaks of a messenger. Mm -hmm. It speaks of preach, publish, show forth, bear, bring, carry, preach, good, tell good, or tell glad tidings. Then the Greek word for gospel is euangelion, euangelion. And it means the same as basar, a good message. And in further definition, it has to do to announce good news, evangelize, mm -hmm. evangelize. Yeah, yeah. So an evangelist is someone who preaches, who publishes, mm -hmm. not necessarily a person who wins souls. Mm -hmm. Because when we hear of evangelists where the church is concerned, it's, it's someone soul. who yeah. wins souls. Evangelist is someone who is proclaiming mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. They have been given a message. CNN is evangelizing. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a platform where they evangelize, right? There, it's a news channel, mm -hmm. right? Cable news network, CNN. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. So every day they are preaching 24 sevens. Anywhere you are and in every nation they have some kind of news channel. So people are able to go and hear what's happening in the country. There is a... Uh, there is scripted news and there is breaking news, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole thing where when we talk about the gospel. But what I want us to think of now, when we talk about good news, so good news, it means that there is something, there is a content mm -hmm. within the news mm -hmm. because we know that there is bad news, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. right? And so what would define the, the news in and of itself is not bad. News mm -hmm. in and of itself is not something that is bad. News, right? It's information. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's what would content. determine news being bad or good? Mm -hmm. The content. Is the content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where God is concerned, God says there is one news that I have now established to be heard about me, and from me, yes, right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. from and about, right. And it the the the, the 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 what is going to frame the content of that news is the kingdom. Yes, that's what we saw. Jesus came, the King. That's what he came. The the forerunner that was sent to announce the King coming of the King, and that the King is bringing something. Because Isaiah, in Isaiah, what, now about 700 or over 700 years before the king came, Isaiah prophesied. And Isaiah said, Behold, 
um, he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son, son is, is given. Mm -hmm. He said his name, um, one, of the, one version of the Bible said, his royal titles will be. And he talked about his name shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful, which means he would perform miracles, counselors. He would, be, he would be speaking and giving information that comes from God and the things about God. Counselor, mighty God. So we see the ability that he's functioning is from God. And it talks about him being everlasting, everlasting father, mm -hmm. prince, prince of, of peace. peace. All of these is defining his, it's, it's his job description, mm -hmm. how he would function, and what is it that he's supposed to accomplish from all of these things that mm -hmm. is mentioned there. Then it says, Prince of Peace. Then it goes on to say, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You know, mm -hmm. I've heard, and at one point I wanted to believe it too. I think maybe I'd believe it. Person said that he's talking about the government, that the government is on his shoulder. So now, if the government is on his shoulder, it means that, you know, they're saying that, like, God is in control of the government. No, it's not talking about that government. It doesn't mean that God can influence it mm -hmm. and that the government is not a part of a process of working out some things to bring God's word to pass. Mm -hmm. But that's not it. Because the verse went on, verse 7 and 8 went on to explain the government. So the government shall be upon his shoulder, and then it says of his kingdom. So now we understand that the government is a kingdom government. Right. Mm -hmm. Of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm. So he's coming as a king, and as you said earlier on, you asked a question, could it be that the reason why we're missing even what the gospel should be about is that we don't recognize Jesus as king? And the answer is yes. The majority of the church does not recognize Jesus in his sovereign position. Mm -hmm. The majority yeah. of the church. Mm -hmm. And if you're not recognizing someone as a king, how would you be able mm -hmm. to represent them as a king? Because a king, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I, I, um, throughout the week, I was, I was listening to some things, hearing some things, looking at some things. And um, I, I look at uh, the world around us, and, and, and it comes over into the church. Without a clear understanding of the scriptures and, and even where God is concerned as king and so on, when we hear king in our, in our especially the, the Western-minded thinking world, people, when they hear king, what do they think? King. We think of someone who dress up in fancy clothes, sit on a chair, and have people waiting on them to mm -hmm. tend them, to mm -hmm. feed them with mm -hmm. grapes, yeah. and um, fanning them. Yeah. And they have all of these. Yeah. And, and you know, for, for most of civilization, if you want to you know, go there, King leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth <laughs> mm -hmm. because yep. the standard in which that they're they rule. they're ruling from are the yeah. way they're, they're they're you know they're expressing their their authority their government or whatever. It's never really in favor of um, you know God's standards or anything like that. So they have a you are have in these, favor of the people are, in, mm -hmm. are exactly in themselves. favor of the people. It's mainly yeah. for their interest. Yes, yes. Um, and their interest is never to complement or to enhance the, the people in a sense, it's mainly just to enhance them, them themselves. Yeah. So it's never, for, it's never for the people. So uh, the, the society on a whole have a, when you mention kingdom, they, they don't want nothing to do with it. They, want with king, they, they don't really want anything to do with it. Yeah. They respect the, the, the ideas that are set up because they know that they have to. If they don't, their head's probably gonna be under the guillotine or something. <laughs> so they, they, they'll respect it out of fear but not out of true, genuine submission because of, you know, uh, of reverence and love and honor and all these different aspects. And, and quite frankly, these kind of kingdoms don't even, they don't carry those characteristics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, throughout the Bible, you would hear Jesus would, uh, God would say, you know, a true kingdom is established on righteousness and, and, and justice and all these different things. And for our experience, we don't, only the, the, the monarch family may experience some kind of a 
justice or righteousness or yeah, whatever yeah. that, you know, but what kind of a righteousness is that if it's not spread abroad for everybody else to participate or to partake of? So they, they have several different standards. They have a standard for the royal family, and then there's a different standard for the rest of their, mm -hmm. their subjects, right? Yeah, so yeah. It, it's people under that kind of a uh, system and government, it, 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 it leaves a bad taste in their mouth. They don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah, so yeah. that's why it's so hard even for the whole idea and the concept of kingdom to break forth the way it should. Uh, even, with, even with fathers, a lot of people, they have, if they have a, a bad example of what a father should be and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it makes it hard for them to even accept God as father. So, yeah, you know, yeah. those two concepts, king, father, kingdom, uh, they're, it, it's like, it's hard. It's like people, it's like God is coming up against a brick wall to try and get these things mm -hmm. through. And then you have the church now, the, 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 the system of God, that is also um, counteracting what God really wants. So you have, mm -hmm. uh, people don't like it, and now you have the leadership who should be promoting it, they're not promoting it. Mm -hmm. So it's a double whammy against, yeah, yeah. against yeah. God's order. Yeah, well, yeah. Since, since we're out of time, um, we're gonna come back and look at the real concepts of, of king and kingdom in order to understand that Jesus himself is a king and that what he spoke about was concerning the kingdom that he represents. And, and it's something that is vitally mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. to the representation of heaven mm -hmm. in the earth. Yeah. So in Matthew 4 and verse 23, it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. We're going to come back and pick up right where we're leaving off right now. And until next time, this has been Kingdom Living Now. Join us again. It's here, it's right here, it's right now. It's right here, it's not near, it's right now. Say, it's here, not near. It's here.